Hey Shagheads, welcome to another episode of A Shaggy Duck Life. I am Curtis Tucker, the guy that is journaling this podcast, and you can also call me Shags. So this episode I am going to call Best Laid Plans, and there's a couple of different reasons why I'm calling it that, but uh, I apologize for being out of pocket for a while. I'm going to uh, probably need to pull up my calendar again, but you may be wondering why I disappeared again after starting out the year saying, hey, I'm really going to get this going and I'm going to try to stay consistent. I'm going to be doing social media. I'm going to do my blogging and my podcasting. And all of that uh, was uh, high on my list of things to do. And I think I had started out pretty good. I was uh, getting some things going uh, as usual. There were some setbacks probably in the way. But uh, if you own your own business or you try to do some of this, uh, you know, YouTube videos or podcasting or blogging, uh, there's always going to be something that's going to try to interrupt you. And so you just need to be prepared for that. And that's kind of what this episode is going to be about kind of telling you guys what has happened to me in the last two and a half weeks um, and why I've gotten delayed on everything. Uh, I've kept a little bit of stuff up, but definitely not everything that I had planned on. So again, I'm going to pull up the calendar and it was, uh, so January 12th was a Wednesday and my wife and my oldest daughter, Piper, were headed off to Florida. She's with the OU Palm team, and they were going to compete in Palm and National. So they left, and they were headed to Florida. My youngest daughter was here for another couple of days before she went back to Colorado. Um, since my wife was leaving town on a Wednesday, I called up Todd, who I do the other podcast, podcast with. Don't forget that uh, you can listen to me also on the 70s Buzz podcast and Buzzhead Radio podcast. And so we do those podcasts together, which we had done that Tuesday night. And so uh, ask him what he was doing for lunch on Wednesday. Uh, he and another buddy of ours were going to a hamburger joint. So I went and met them there. And I'm guessing that that was where he gave me or somebody at the restaurant gave me COVID. And again, that was on Wednesday, January 12th. Um, Wednesday. No, actually, yeah. So I, I probably caught something then on the 12th and then um, felt fine on Thursday. Everybody had left. Then Thursday night, basically into Friday morning, which I guess we'll classify as Friday morning. In the wee hours of the night, I woke up uh, freezing and had a fever and couldn't get warm and uh, really uncomfortable. And then I think it broke and then I was sweating and was throwing the sheets and the blankets off, um, couldn't get cool enough. And so I woke up that morning knowing that I had something going on. Flu's been going around, COVID's been going around. So I'm <clears throat> not really sure what was going on, but I knew it was something um, instead of letting it get me down, I decided to get up that Friday and go for my morning trek, which is usually uh, five to seven miles. I did that. Didn't feel too good, but didn't feel too bad. Um, made it through Friday, but I had a lot of chills. I, didn't, I don't think I had fever, but I just couldn't get warm sometimes, and so I, I laid around with a blanket. Um, normally, I can get on the computer, and I can stay on the computer all day long. Um, my concentration level was pretty low, so I was not able to uh, stay on the computer um, all day Friday. And then um, woke up Saturday not feeling real good. Uh, got into the diarrhea portion of uh, the sickness. Um, you know, stopped up a little bit. I didn't have like chest congestion or heavy coughing. But um, I'd had, I thought, was allergies um, for a couple of weeks before that because my nose um, was staying stopped up and all that. But anyway, so my youngest daughter left for Arkansas that Saturday. So I was alone with just me and the dog, me and uh, my new puppy. And I was just unable to do much and play with him because I just was not feeling super good. I tried to get on the computer and update uh, a lot of the stuff that I know I had to update, 
but I was just unable to concentrate and get anything together for doing a podcast or any blogging or anything like that. So my best laid plans for my 2022 were altered and that weekend I was not able to get a lot of stuff done. So I, uh, I kind of plotted through the weekend, made it to Monday. Uh, I think I felt a little better. I knew I was run down and there was something there, but I made it through Monday. I, I did quarantine, so I, I had quarantine. I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't going to any restaurants. But um, Tuesday, um, I felt good enough um, that I thought I would be able to podcast the other two podcasts. And so we we planned on, Todd and I, and he was sick, <coughs> excuse me, with the same thing that I had. And so I knew it wouldn't matter if he and I got together because we both had the same thing. Um, we were assuming it was COVID. And so we planned on podcasting on that Tuesday, although we normally go out and eat before we podcast, we had decided ahead of time that we were not going to go out and eat because uh, in case we did have COVID, which we figured we did, we didn't want to spread it. So anyway, so um, Monday night, uh, I'm home alone with the dog. Uh, all family is out of town and I hadn't been checking on my mom. Uh, if, if you didn't know, my mom uh, 81 years old, has been getting worse and worse uh, as the weeks have gone by, getting basically weaker and weaker. Uh, and so I've, I've known for the past couple of weeks that um, things were not going to you know, go well here pretty soon. I didn't know um, if she was going to be with us you know, for weeks or months, but in my mind, I knew that it wasn't going to be a whole lot longer. I just, and then we were, were trying to figure out you know, how are we going to take care of her? She was unable to get up out of her chair on her own anymore. My sister was going over there. My sister was able to help her get to the bathroom three times a day. I'd go over there and take her food or, or just talk to her, get her pills for her, things like that. But um, it was getting tougher and tougher. My sister was starting to complain that she was going to need some help. We were thinking about, you know, hiring um, some nurses to come in, talking about a hospital, hospital bed, um, but my sister finally got to the point that week where she was having to have somebody come help her, help my mom stand up and basically just turn half a turn and then sit down in a wheelchair and then that way they could get her to the bathroom. And that's really all they had to do and then get her back out of the wheelchair, half a turn back into the rocking chair. And so my sister was trying to do that with my mom Monday night and because I felt like I had COVID, I was not... Um, spending a lot of time at my mom's. I was not going over there a whole lot, but I had gone over there that Monday to do her medication. Um, she was a little bit out of it. I mean, you know, she was she was there and talking and I was trying to joke with her, but uh, she was not happy. Um, she would, was telling me, you know, what am I going to do? I can't do anything. Um, I can't go on like this, things like that. And I kept saying, mom, I know we're trying to figure it out. Um, just hang in there. We'll figure this out. Um, thinking that maybe we could get a nurse to come in and maybe help things out. Um, knowing that uh, it probably was not going to get any better. And so my sister and my nephew got her out of her chair that Monday night and got her to the restroom and then they were getting her back. <coughs> Excuse me, um, apologize for my voice. Um, I'm about 99.7% over this whole COVID crap, but I still have a little bit of, uh, of, a little bit of it stuck in my throat. And so uh, this was on the, the 17th, I believe that was the Monday. And so when they tried to get my mom up, not the 17th, yeah, the 17th, um, they uh, were trying to get my mom back out of the wheelchair, back into her chair, and they heard something pop in her shoulder, and then they got her into the chair, and she just kind of started going wacky and complaining about pain, and she kind of went into a zone where she wasn't quite paying, you know, she was almost out of it. Um, so they called me. 
I wasn't quite sure what to do. I mean, I hated to take her to the ER or the hospital with COVID and everything, and knowing that it was gonna be very hard to get her to the ER just for a dislocated shoulder or something. And so I was trying to think, you know, can we bring in a nurse? Can we get somebody to, to get to the house to check her out? Um, my sister was starting to panic a little bit and I didn't know what to do. So I put my mask on, went over there to see what was going on. She was not doing very well. I mean, she wasn't doing bad. She just, she was complaining and moaning, just constant moaning, constant moaning. And then when I would try to talk to her, um, she would kind of come out of it and then say a little bit, but then go right back into the moaning. And so I figured, you know, there's no way, um, you know, we're gonna make it through the night without this, without something. And so we decided to call the non-emergency ambulance so they showed up, checked her out. There was nothing they could do. Um, they said that they needed to get her to the ER so she could have an x-ray. It was two of them, two paramedics with the ambulance, and uh, there was no way they could get her up because she was so weak. Plus now we had the arm problem. And so, <coughs> excuse me. And so they called the fire department. The fire department showed up with four big guys um, which I knew uh, most of. And so they, they picked her up, got her onto the gurney, got her into the ambulance, took her to the ER, which I could not go because i um, pretty sure I had COVID. I knew that the hospital was not going to let me in, um, especially if I had COVID. So my sister and my niece went and they stayed for a couple hours. They did do an x-ray. My mom's arm was not dislocated or broken. They just said it was loose. Um, basically, the old age um, was causing her joints to be really loose, and so that was the noise. But, you know, it did hurt her um, trying to get her uh, into the chair and all the pressure. So they gave her, a, I believe, a shot or some pain relievers, which I think kind of sent her into, you know, she was already weak, and I think her mind was already starting to go, and the pain reliever, I think, kind of sent her into her own little world. Um, before they had left, I told the uh, fire department, I said, what are we gonna do if they release her tonight and they don't keep her in the hospital? I said, we can't get her back into the house uh, because you know we couldn't get her to the ER in the first place. So they suggested that if they did send her home just to call the ambulance and the fire department and basically just do everything that we had just done, but in reverse order, which is what happened. They released her. We brought her home. Uh, the firemen got her into her chair. She was, uh, she'd been sleeping in a chair, a recliner that goes all the way back. And so they got her into her chair. They leaned it back, put her head on a pillow. Um, she had the pain reliever and uh, they left. So my sister and I talked and um, they had sent in a prescription. So I was gonna head to the pharmacy in the morning to get her prescription and then I was also going to head to a pharmacy and order a hospital bed that next day because we basically had decided um, you know there was just no way we were going to be able to handle her anymore and so that morning my sister went over there where she normally helps her up and gets her to the bathroom um, she could not get her up I don't even think she tried um, but she tried talking to her. My mom responded with a couple of words, but nothing major, um, just laid there on her pillow. And so my sister said, mom, are you okay? I'm, you know, I'm going to go to work. And my mom responded, yes. And then my sister left for work and that was pretty early in the morning. And then, um, later that morning I went to get the prescription. Unfortunately it had been called into another pharmacy, and so I didn't get it. I called my sister, told her, you know, I didn't get the prescription. She said, well, what are we going to do? I, I didn't get mom to the bathroom, but she's going to have to go to the bathroom. What are we going to do? I said, well, I guess we're going to have to order a hospital bed and uh, just basically leave her in a hospital bed until, you know, until something happens. And so I said, I'm going to go check on her because uh, I wanted to kind of assess the situation. So I went over to her house. It was about 10, 20, Tuesday morning. And when I went in, um, I could hear her breathing like she was asleep, which happened 
you know, occasionally when I would go in there. And uh, lately, you know, if I would go in and she'd be asleep, it would take quite a bit to wake her up. <coughs> and so um, I listened to her breathe for a little bit and I uh, started yelling, hey, mom, I'm here. Are you OK? Hey, mom. Um, and I think from from there, everything kind of started to become a blur. But I kind of I kind of think her her breathing changed a little bit, which I, I think I took at first um, to think that she was on the verge of waking up because as she would wake up, you know, her breathing would not be as loud, but um, she just kept kept on kind of stayed the same. And so I finally went up to her, even though, so I, you know, believing that I had COVID, I did have a mask on. I didn't want to get too close to her, but I went ahead and decided to go um, kind of shake her a little bit. So I shook her and uh, was getting no response. And then I rubbed her foot and I said, hey, mom, are you okay? And that was about, that was when I noticed that she had stopped breathing, that she had stopped breathing to the point where I could not hear her breathing anymore. I didn't know that she, if she had stopped completely, um, but I knew that she was not waking up and that I could no longer hear her breathing. So I decided to get on the phone real quick and I called hospice thinking that hospice would have a nurse that maybe they could send over and uh, evaluate her and, and you know, kind of let me know what was going on. At that point, uh, my niece and my sister showed up and um, the, the hospice nurse said, you know, we can't really help you if you're not already client and you can't become a client without a doctor's order. Well, you know, we couldn't get a doctor's order without taking her to the doctor. And I said, look, I'm not even sure my mom's gonna make it through the day, let alone trying to get her to a doctor. Um, I said, okay, you, you can't help me. So I hung up and I said, hey, you guys check and see what's going on with mom. And my niece, who had taken some medical classes, um, said, I don't think she's breathing. So I called the non-emergency ambulance number again, and I said, hey, can you guys start heading this way? We think there's something wrong with my mom. And the 911 operator said, you know, well, tell me what's going on. And I said, well, I came in and she was breathing like she was asleep and now she's not breathing. And she said, oh, well, you need to immediately perform CPR. And I said, what, what do you mean? She goes, well, you need to get her off of the chair and perform CPR. And I said, well, I can't do that. I said, we had her in the ER last night because um, her arm was hurt. And I said, she's too frail. And the lady said, well, you need to be uh, performing life-saving CPR. And so I told my sister and my niece, I said, you need to start CPR. And they said, we can't do that. And the lady said, you need to grab her by the ankles, pull her off of the chair to get her onto the floor and start CPR. And I said, look, I, I can't do that. And I don't think we're going to be able to do that. In my mind, I was also thinking, I don't think she needs to be saved. I think she, she has found peace and gone to heaven and, and she's gone. Unfortunately, we did not have a DNR, which is a do not resuscitate order. Um, and we hadn't really discussed that. So about that time, I could hear the emergency sirens um, showing up and the police, I believe the police had showed up by then because they got a call as well. Um, and so, or the fire department, I believe it showed up. And so they went in to check on her. They pulled her off the chair and because there was no DNR, they did um, start uh, to try to resuscitate her, which, um, you know, I understand they legally, I think they had to, uh, I wish we had a DNR so we could have said, no, don't do that because uh, it was a wasted 30 minutes. But uh, they did try to bring her back. Uh, if they had brought her back, it would not have been good. She probably never would have woke again. She may have laid in a bed or a hospital bed for a few more days. It just, it just wouldn't have been pleasant or good. Although I guess we could have said um, goodbye in a more proper manner. But, uh, but they couldn't. Um, so my mom passed right there in front of me, uh, dealing with COVID. And then she passed, the police were there, the police had to call a supervisor, police had to investigate um, to make sure it wasn't a suspicious death. Uh, we had to wait for the coroner 
to uh, decide whether they wanted to come check or whether it sounded, you know, so they, they called the doctor, checked on her physical condition and assessed it that she probably um, had just passed of uh, basically of old age. So the coroner uh, released the body uh, and all the, this process was about two and a half to three hours by the time it was all said and done. Um, we finally were able to contact a funeral home. They came, picked up my mom's body, took her to the funeral home, um, basically left us in shock. And so that was on a Tuesday. I'm still dealing with COVID. So um, best laid plans for 2022 uh, immediately got rearranged. Uh, the next two weeks, uh, I've been dealing with COVID and the death of my mom, planning funeral things, uh, doing stuff with the house, um, all that stuff. So went through a couple other phases. Um, the next two weeks with COVID, uh, did, uh, did about three and a half days of severe sore throat. Uh, so severe it would make, wake me up in the middle of the night when I would swallow. Uh, got over that, um, started kind of a cough this raspiness to my voice, uh, just, a, just a dry cough. I never um, ended up with uh, like breathing issues or, or heavy congestion. Now my buddy, he had a little more coughing and congestion issues. Um, he's in a little, he's not in, in good shape. He doesn't work out. I work out every day. I did get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. He did not get any vaccine. We basically both ended up with about the same symptoms, uh, neither one of us worse than the other. Uh, he did eventually feel like he wanted to go to the doctor just to get things checked out. So he went to see his doctor. His doctor basically said, uh, we think you have COVID, go home, take vitamin C, D, uh, zinc, this and that, rest. And uh, we'll, they did the test, the three-day test. And so he got his results um, three days later, confirmed that he had COVID, which basically confirms that I had COVID. Um, we've both been um, getting over COVID. So again, apologize for my voice. Apologize for not getting <coughs> any more episodes out than I did in January. But I wanted to squeeze this one in for January. Uh, we had the funeral for my mom on Saturday. It was bittersweet. You know, I was glad that she was no longer suffering, no longer in pain. Um, it was not fun knowing that I was not ever going to be able to talk to her again. It's kind of weird knowing that I'm not going to have to go by there and check on her um, every day, every other day. Um, but it was nice having family and friends in town. Um, the four guys that I went to high school with, uh, we've stayed pretty close, although um, it's probably been 20 years since all four of us. Now, I've been with those three dozens of times over the last 20 years, just not all three of them at the same time for about 20 years. Uh, and we, we figured that probably the last time we were all four together was at my wedding um, over 20 years ago. But uh, in high school, we had a thing called May Fate where we had to dress up and walk around these maypoles and stuff. But we all four stood together. My mom took several pictures of us and one of them, um, I was looking kind of goofy. Uh, Kyle was squinting because of the sun. It was just one of those pictures that um, has always been fun to have of us four. So we decided that if we all four made it to the funeral, that we would recreate the picture, which we did. I will have that picture posted. It's posted on the Curtis Tucker, uh, my Curtis Tucker personal Facebook page and Instagram, Shagheads Instagram and Shagheads. Uh, Twitter account. So you can check it out there. I will eventually get it posted on curtistucker.com, uh, the blog. But uh, so eventually you guys will be able to check it out there. And uh, we actually, uh, without a huge amount of effort, we almost got the pose exactly. Um, it's been fun seeing the response to people seeing that picture. But um, uh, just talking about a lot of memories um, you know, funerals tend to do that. So um, we buried my mom on January 29th. We had also buried my father-in-law January 29th a year ago. And then, or he had passed away on January 29th. And then I believe we, uh, my best friend who was here for the funeral, 
he had lost his dad three or four years ago on January 29th. So um, look out for January 29th. Um, anyway, uh, he and I spent a little time driving around town talking about memories. We went down into the um, dark underground tunnels that we used to play in as kids for fun. We went a little bit uh, of the ways in. I took a picture of that. Um, so that was kind of fun. So anyway, um, although it was a sad week and I've been trying to get over COVID, um, it was good in, in other ways. And so um, lots of other stuff going on uh, in this Shaggy Duck life uh, to bring you guys, to update you guys on. I'm still working on the book. I do have the official logo and design done for Banana Seat Squad. Um, I work with another cartoonist and we've got a banana seat bike and the logo put together. I might um, reveal that tomorrow, February 1st, or at least sometime in February, I will reveal that. Um, I'm working on um, some art under the name of Shags, and I've got some better ideas of what I'm gonna do there. So that'll be coming out soon. Um, also working on, uh, the so I've redone the Shaggy Duck logo and uh, still working on designs for the Shaggy Duck clothing line and lifestyle brand, which will be coming out. Again, I would be way further ahead if all this hadn't happened, but I have fallen behind a little bit. And then also um, training the puppy. Uh, if you have not heard or didn't hear the last episode, uh, he's doing well, gaining weight. Graham is gaining weight. Um, took him on a walk today, basically his second official walk to get him used to the leash. He is really, really smart. Um, continue to uh, play Frisbee with him and just having fun with him. So tons of stuff going on. Following my girls, they've actually been here for the last two weekends, which has been um, really nice. And uh, now they're all gone. Life has gotten back to a little bit of normal today on a Monday and for the first time in, in several weeks. And, and I am feeling better, so I am able to do more um, work and stuff than I was. So other things that have happened real quick. Um, one of the blog posts that I may do is that the house that I am living in now and have my the new Shaggy Duck studio we lived in six years ago and had lived in it for five years then sold it to our in-laws moved out they both passed away so we moved back in but the other house that we lived in um, it finally did sell we close on that at the end of this month Feb or the next you know tomorrow uh, February 28th we'll be closing on that so that's been good um, I'll do probably a, a podcast episode a Shaggy Duck Life talking about this house, um, how it's always been family owned, how we ended up living in it twice, uh, and all that good stuff. So uh, look for that coming up. Other stuff, um, here's some interesting stuff. Um, so my mom and dad um, were married, I believe in 59, and they were married for 10 years. I was born in 62. Uh, I had an older brother born in January of 1961. He was still born, uh, is buried here in Enid. So, so January of 1961, he was born, still born. And then January of 1962, my sister was born. And then December of 1962, I was born. So we were all three born almost exactly a year apart. Uh, although my sister and I were born 11 months apart, and so we were both born in the same year. So anyway, my mom and dad got divorced in 1969. She moved us back to Enid. I was raised in Enid all through the 70s. Um, one of the reasons I think I had such a great childhood in the 70s because I only had one parent. She had to work several jobs, which gave me a lot of freedom, um, and so I spent a lot of time running around uh, with friends and things like that. But um, in 1969, 1970, about the time they got divorced, I believe he made one last trip to Enid on his motorcycle to see us. And uh, that was the last time I ever saw or spoke to my dad in my whole life. So I was basically raised um, without a paternal or, you know, dad, real dad. But uh, my best friend's dad stood in as my my dad growing up, they took us, took me on vacation all the time because my mom couldn't take us on that many vacations. And so um, 
he ended up going to Nebraska with his girlfriend that he had been having the affair with. Uh, because of that, my mom never gave him visitation rights because he would not break up with her. So again, I never spoke to him again. And then I believe he eventually, I don't know all the details, I believe he eventually broke up with her, met another lady and married her. And then they had two kids. Uh, I remember growing up that my mom did tell me that my dad had gotten remarried and had two kids. I believe she thought it was a, a, a boy and a girl like me and my sister, um, but it wasn't. It was actually ended up being two daughters. And uh, then towards the hin end of his life, which was about, um, I don't know, four, four years ago, five years ago, before he passed away, <coughs> his wife at the time contacted me and my sister on Facebook and just wanted to let us know that our dad was not doing well and just wanted to connect with us. Um, eventually, not long, really a very short time after that, he passed away. So I don't even know if there would have been time for me to head up ne to Nebraska to meet him or talk to him. Um, I didn't because my mom was alive. I decided that uh, I wasn't going to put a whole lot of effort into trying to connect with my dad or my half-sisters, which I've never met. Um, we have connected on Facebook and just liked each other's pages and, and we like things and then probably really short comments on a few things over the past couple of years. Um, but I decided that I was not going to connect with them until my mom passed away, just kind of out of respect for her. Well, now that she has passed away, um, another goal that I have for 2022 is to get up to Nebraska or somewhere in between and meet for the first time my two half-sisters, uh, Jody and Jenny. And that'll be interesting because then I'll get uh, some information about my dad that I didn't know. So, so you know, basically I had my dad um, when he was young and uh, then they he was their dad as he got older uh, into old age and then up until when he died. And then from the time that we all connected on Facebook till today, unfortunately, their mom, who started that whole connection process, um, has passed away of cancer. Before she passed away, though, she did had sent me a whole, uh, probably about five or six photos of my dad. Um, did not recognize him. Would not have ever recognized him had I met him on the street somewhere. Um, it's kind of like when you think of John F. Kennedy, you kind of have this young, vibrant picture of him in your head. And let's say that somebody somebody did a picture, found a picture of him later in life had he lived. Um, you just, you know, it's like, well, that's not the guy I remember. So same thing with my dad. I just remember a young guy. Um, and so, but anyway, it'll be interesting to connect with them. So that's one connection I've got coming up that I'm looking forward to in 2022. Another connection um, I don't think I've mentioned this story on A Shaggy Duck Life. So my uncle, my mom's brother, who was seven years younger, unfortunately he passed away in 2005 at a very, very early age um, in his, I believe in his 50s. Um, had I believe he either had heart disease or cancer. He was a heavy smoker. Um, did not like the doctors. He did not want to go to the doctors and find out what was wrong with him. So he, he was taking no treatment. He basically just, uh, they found him dead in his bed one morning. Um, I do not believe they did an autopsy. So we're not really sure quite how he died, but he had been losing a lot of weight. We knew he was sick with something. I assumed it was cancer. Um, again, could have been heart disease, uh, probably cancer, but, um, a story that unfolded that I was not aware of was that when my uncle was, I can't, I'm not sure if he was either in late high school or early college, he had gotten his girlfriend pregnant here in Enid, Oklahoma, and the gal's parents, you know, back in that day uh, was something that, you know, you didn't want everybody to know about. So they shipped her off to California to have the baby. Well, when she had the baby, she had a son and put him up for adoption. And my uncle never um, was connected with her again. They broke up and I don't know that he ever spoke with her again. So he did not know what happened to his child. I'm not even sure if he knew 
that he had had a son. And so, you know, he, he and my grandma knew and they told my mom, and I believe at some point, maybe they told my sister. Basically, I believe everybody in the family knew but me. For some reason, I just wasn't at one of the meals or something where they divulged all this. So, um, so, so fast forward a little bit. My uncle uh, meets a lady, marries her. They have two kids, and those are my, my two first cousins um, on my mom's side, uh, Skylar and Melena. And so I've grown up with them. They've been my cousins and uh, Milena has stayed in Enid. Skylar moved off to Colorado. And so um, about a year and a half ago, uh, maybe almost two years ago, my cousin, Milena, decided to do one of those 23andMe DNA test things. Oh, my nice iced tea with ice from my new ice maker. Have I told you guys about that? Anyway, um, so um, she did the DNA test and sure enough, popped up that she had a brother. Well, the brother is uh, my first first cousin from my uncle that uh, was put up for adoption. He was adopted by a family. I believe they were Mormon and raised in Utah. And so she found him. Um, I can't remember. She did a little research and she found him on Facebook and connected with him. And then after she connected with him, he was really excited to meet other members of the family. So we connected on Facebook. Come to find out, he's a surfer dude that had moved to Bali, uh, was living in Bali with his family. Unfortunately, had had, had uh, some rough times, had become addicted to drugs, had done uh, some prison time, uh, even a suicide attempt, but had gotten his life straightened out, um, was now... Uh, doing things that I wish I was doing, uh, but he's podcasting, um, vlogging, uh, surfing, doing stuff like that. He's an entrepreneur like I am. When I first saw the uh, first few videos that he did, I um, was just so surprised that he was a spitting image of my uncle. Not only did they look alike, but they sounded, talked alike, um, much more than the other two cousins who I'd known all my life. They um, you wouldn't even really know they were um, his kids, but uh, this Sean, <coughs> his first son, is a spitting in image of him. So anyway, fast forward to this week. Um, unfortunately, my mom passed away the week that Sean left um, Bali and has headed back to the States to take care of his adopted dad, who I believe he's, he's having to put into a nursing home, but while he's here in the States, he's gonna meet up with my other first cousin in Colorado, and they are driving to Enid this Thursday. And so I am going to get to spend a couple of days with my first cousin, who is um, a lot like me, basically doing the entrepreneur and the, the podcasting and things. Um, his podcast is called The, um, the Sage Surfer. I believe, the Sage Surfer, the Soul. Ah, I'll have to look that up for you. But Sean um, Barnett, you, ah, I hate to look that up while I'm uh, here. But uh, don't forget you can go to um, YouTube and watch this podcast on YouTube at Curtis Tucker TV, uh, the channel there. But um, So look for pictures of that. Maybe I'll try to get him on an episode of A Shaggy Duck Life. Uh, I'll try to get a little video of him and uh, maybe video some of the reunion with him. So that's going to be fun. So um, lots of reunions of relatives that I've never met coming up this year. Uh, I'm still looking for 2022 to be a great year, even though my mom has passed. But again, in a way, that's kind of been a relief. Um, she was having such a miserable time. She was not happy with life. And so um, this has been a relief for her. Now that I've gotten COVID, hopefully I won't get it again. Uh, so we've gotten that out of the way. So it's only looking up from here. Let's get out of January, get out of this cold weather. Uh, it was 72 degrees here in Enid today. I was in shorts. I uh, took the puppy for a walk, spent some time outside. Uh, they're looking for uh, cold temperatures tomorrow, some rain, um, icing on Wednesday, snow on Thursday, several days of below freezing temperatures with wind chills in the minus degrees, which I'm not looking forward to, but February starts tomorrow, so I'm looking for spring um, to get here as quick as possible. I am not a cold weather guy. I hate winter. 
Um, I don't mind one day of snow if it goes away and it's sunny the next day. Um, I have skied in shorts. Uh, you know me, I would love to live in shorts. And so anyway, so I'm working on lots of stuff. I will release that Banana Sea Squad um, logo coming up pretty quick. Um, hopefully we'll be able to squeeze in four Shaggy Duck, a Shaggy Duck Life episodes for February. And don't forget, um, you know, this is kind of my personal journal, kind of behind scenes of a Shaggy Duck Life, an Enid Buzz, the book, the art, um, the Shaggy Duck brand, all that stuff that I have going on. Um, again, this episode, so um, um, Best Laid Plans is, uh, is the name of the episode, which, you know, I had all this stuff planned that I was going to do, that I was going to keep on top of. Um, even this episode itself, so I, this is the second time um, tonight that I've recorded this episode. Uh, the first episode, um, I was using my Rode, um, what are those called? The micro, anyway, these little, these little things. I was using those. Um, when I turned them on, I noticed the batteries were low, but still green. And so about um, 20 minutes into the episode, one of them died and I lost sound. And so I basically had to unplug them and I, I went ahead and did the whole episode <coughs> again. Excuse me. I did the whole episode, but the end of the episode was without a microphone at all and it sounded too bad. And so I decided to re-record as much as I could re remember. So my best laid plans um, didn't work out so well. So now I'm 30 more minutes down the road. Uh, I just took up my lavalier mic to my iPhone and that's what I'm recording with. I hope it sounds okay. I know my voice is a little scratchy. Hopefully by the next episode, my voice will be back to normal. Um, you guys check out everything I've got going on. Uh, send me email at curtis at shaggyduck.com. I'm going to try to use that email a lot more for the Shaggy Duck side of things. Uh, hopefully some really great Shaggy Duck stuff going, you guys. Um, don't forget, I turned 59 at the end of 2021, and I feel like I'm just getting things kicked off, um, just getting the, the book going, just getting the art going, just getting the new Shaggy Duck brand going. I've got lots of stuff that uh, I'm wanting to do. I do have friends that have retired, that have passed away, that are um, on the verge of retiring, but uh, that is not me. I am uh, starting tons of new stuff. Uh, I'm looking forward to staying in great shape this year. Uh, if you don't know, if you haven't heard, if, if, if you've missed the episode where I talked about my plan is to live to be 102 because I didn't start having kids until I was 39 and 40. And so to see my grandkids uh, grow, I'm going to need to live to a ripe old age. And to do that, I'm going to stay in shape. Uh, continue to walk and exercise, and I'm knocking on wood. I know at some point um, something could try to stop me, but I'm not going to let it. I'm going to stay in shape. You guys can too. There's no reason you guys can't start today. All it takes is walking. You guys stay in shape. It's going to be great for you. It's going to help you in the long run. Um, you guys start something new. Start a book, a blog, a podcast, uh, a clothing line, something fun. Always have something on the side. There's always something. I've always got something to look forward to. Um, as you get older, I mean, as my mom got older, she did not have anything to look forward to except her grandkids and great-grandkids. Uh, she sat in a chair and watched Fox News all day long, did not exercise, uh, didn't go hang out with her friends, um, wouldn't go out to eat with us anymore, even though I offered tons of times to pick her up. Um, she just didn't get out. She And, and that just, uh, you know, that helped um, bring on, you know, dementia and the end of her life a lot sooner than it probably should have. Uh, has she exercised and uh, kept after it? She, you know, probably would have made it a lot longer. So you guys stay healthy out there. Have a great 2022. Stay motivated. Um, let me know if you need any extra motivation from me, if you need some ideas from me. Um, would love hearing from you guys um, and hear what you guys have going on. So you guys have a great week this week and enjoy your February 2022. Don't forget we've got uh, February 22nd coming up on a Tuesday, 20, 
22. That will be Todd and I's 222nd episode of the 70s Buzz podcast. I'm trying to book a 70s celebrity, not having much luck, not trying super hard, but uh, I'm trying to get somebody on there. So that should be a fun episode. Um, Again, when I meet up with my first cousin and my half-sisters, I'll try to make some episodes out of that. So you guys, I will talk to you soon and uh, stay healthy out there. See ya.